Good morning. It's Friday. Glad to be with you. We are uh, discussing the three sixteens um, in the New Testament. Some of them, uh, five this week. We looked at Ephesians, Colossians. We looked at Second Thessalonians yesterday. We were in uh, the book of First John, and um, pretty neat that there there are just some. Um, it's it's kind of neat how these three sixteens come up again and again and again, and uh, they are some really really great promises and great um, um, accommodations and reminders um, for uh, for us as believers. Um, and so we've been looking at them. Before I jump into today's content, we're in Revelation chapter three. Um, and uh, we're going to look specifically, of course, at verse 16. But before I do, just want to remind you that we are back and uh, we are open again here at the church. So we're having in-person um, services again. We started last week and uh, it was just a great, great week. Um, it was just, I, I got to tell you, I, I was overwhelmed. I literally was overwhelmed um, by being together with everyone again. It just... Uh, felt right. So if you're able to be with us, uh, we'd love to see you again. Um, we are uh, cleaning the church. We're disinfecting. We're um, using gloves to put anything out that we have to put out. Um, we are collecting the offering uh, differently. So if you're nervous, um, I, I, I think if you talk to anyone that was there, they'll tell you that it was that we, we um, did a good job. I think I can I can say that uh, uh, confidently that we did a good job and uh, just a thank you to everyone um, who's been helping us out. Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, just just amazing. Um, so um, and a reminder that we're no longer at ten o'clock. Uh, we are back to nine and eleven, and that includes our online services. Uh, they are at nine and eleven, so you can jump in and you can always see our services. Uh, on our website. Um, as a matter of fact, on Sunday mornings, um, that's a great place to watch our services. Just go to our website, hit watch, go right on there. The Our live, um, our live stream is, is there as well. Um, but you can also go there and uh, during the week, uh, we put our, you know, each week's services are there. You can even go back and watch past weeks um, as well. So, um, Revelation chapter 3. God is speaking to uh, different churches. Um, we see just in chapter 3, God speaks to Sardis. God speaks to the church in Philadelphia. And finally, he comes to the church of Laodicea. And um, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, is one of uh, a handful of verses in the Bible that scare me. I, I mean, really, really... Um, our wake-up call uh, scriptures that that remind us um, that that we have to be diligent about our relationship with with God, and so I, I want to give a little bit of context because Laodicea um, is a church that by it, it's probably I think Laodicea is probably of of the seven churches that um, are mentioned in Revelation I think Laodicea would epitomize the American church more than any other church that is is represented um, in in Revelation and the churches that Paul uh, that Christ speaks to and that John records. And Laodicea is um, is known by its wealth, its prestige, and its absolute um, it it doesn't need help from anyone. Um, as a matter of fact. Um, Christ says this, he says, you say I am rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing. Now look, this is verse 17. And you don't realize that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You think you have everything you need, 
but you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Wow. And in verse 20, verse 20, we get this scripture that we use so often for a salvation message. And it says this, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Now, here's what he's saying, because I'm going to get to verse 16 in just a second, because I, I think these are important um, for us to realize. What Jesus is saying to this church is this, you think you have everything you need, but you are absolutely far from me. You have a form of godliness, but no power. You look, you look the part, but inside you're naked, wretched, poor, miserable. And Jesus says this to the church. I'm on the outside. I'm knocking on the door and I'm asking to come in. Will you let me in? Now, let's read verse 16. But since you are lukewarm, but since you are like lukewarm water, water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. How, how much more of a wake-up call do we need than that? Jesus says this. He says, because you're neither hot for me or cold, you're just, eh, you're just saved. I'll just go to heaven. That'll be good enough for me. And Jesus says, it's not. Yeah, 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 but you know, I'll just hold on. I'll just hang on. I'll do my Sunday morning thing. I'll just be a Christian in name, but I won't really identify as a Christ follower. I won't really be all in. I, I won't really get involved. I won't really, no, 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 no. Jesus says, that's not why I died. So you could just, just, just get it. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You don't reject me, I reject you, because let's be honest, your heart, your affections, your passion, your desires, they're not for me. And I'm standing at the door, I'm knocking, but you're like, ah, I'm good enough. I go to church. I'm good enough. I, I, I volunteer once in a while. I'm good enough. I put money in the offering. I'm, I'm good. Thank you, Jesus. I got it. I don't need you. I don't know about you, but that makes my blood run cold. God, I want to be passionate for you. God, I want to be all in. I want people to see me, but really see you. I want people to go, now there's someone I would like to. I may not agree with everything about them, but boy, oh boy, they are passionate about God. They are passionate about the, they know God. They know the voice of God. They have the fruits of the Spirit at, at work in their life. The armor of God is obviously on them. I want what they have. God, their godliness, offend, you know, they, it offends me. They're so godly. They pursue godliness. They pursue holiness. They're, they're not just a Christian in name. They're not just a Christ follower in name. They get it. They go passionately after God. Church, church, read Revelation chapter 3. Let, let the passion of God fill your heart again. If, if you've allowed yourself to drift even a little bit, how about you rekindle that fire and that passion and that desire for God today? Let this be the wake-up call. Jesus is standing at... That isn't, that isn't for sinners. That was for the church that was written. I stand at the door and I knock, and if anyone will let me in, I will come in. And he says, we'll have a meal together as friends. There'll be reconciliation. Let's have reconciliation today. Don't pass by this moment so quickly and say, oh, it's for somebody else. Listen, let this be for you this morning. God, no matter what, I want a passion and a heart and a desire and my affections to be for you. 
Lord, I pray right now if there's anyone, if me, this is a wake-up call for pastor today. Let us be white hot for you. God, may we not be in the position where you go, ugh, that tastes horrible. No one likes lukewarm. God, I pray that we would be white hot for you, that we would answer the door today and let you back in. Christ, come back into my life. Come back in with passion and fervor. God, where I've allowed sin to have a root in my life eradicated, where I've allowed um, discontent to, to have a root in my life, let it go. Lord, where I've allowed bitterness for someone to come in and steal the joy that I once had, come in, take it, so that I can be in right relationship with others and with you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you, church. Thanks for spending a couple minutes with me today. God bless you.